Welcome to the Arabesque Scissors YouTube channel. I'm Ali Phillips and in this video I'm going to take you through the final construction where we take all those components that we've made in the previous videos and we sew them all together into a completed creator's compendium. Now if you love instructional sewing videos that help you grow in your skills as a sewist, please consider hitting that subscribe button and giving this video a like. And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future patterns for me, please leave me a comment. So here's our stack of things that we've made in the previous videos. We've got our zipper and the facing. We've got both of our inner cover flaps and we've got our exterior. So the first thing you need to do is check that your midpoints are marked on your uh, zipper facing and remark them if they've uh, disappeared. So just fold your facing in half like that and then just uh, mark with a pen on both sides of that facing. And now we need to mark the midpoints on our exterior. So depending on the version that you've made, um, you're going to need to fold that in half on both of the sides. You can see on this version we've already got a nice centre line marked uh, with that centre seam. Uh, but if you're using the um, other versions, the whole cloth cover or the centre spine version, just make sure that you fold it um, in half along each of the sides so that you can mark all four of the midpoints. Now it's really important to have your cover facing the right way up so make sure that your front is on the right hand side and make sure that your back is on the left hand side. And this is really important to make sure that your zipper is going to be opening from the top down to the bottom. So you want to make sure that the pull starts at the top and opens towards the bottom. So grab your ruler and you're going to measure out three quarters of an inch either side of this center midpoint mark. So just place a mark nice and clearly three quarters of an inch on the right and three quarters of an inch on the left so that you make sure you have a total gap between those two marks of three quarters of an inch. Now just go ahead and repeat these marks on the bottom uh, midpoint mark. So three quarters of an inch on the left and three quarters of an inch on the right for a total distance of one and a half inches. So grab your zipper and unzip it all the way. Like keep both of those tabs together. So now we're going to flip it so that it's right sides down. And then we're going to take the right hand side and we're going to align the raw edge of the facing with that right hand mark that we've marked. So just clip that in place and then we're going to move down the facing and without twisting it we're going to take that midpoint and line that up with the midpoint on the side edge of the exterior and clip that into place. And then we're going to work around without twisting that facing. Then we're going to align that facing with that bottom right hand mark that we made. Now take the left hand side of your zipper and make sure you're not twisting it. So you're going to align that raw edge with the left hand mark that we have at the top here and just clip that into place. Then match up the midpoint mark on this side of the facing with the centre mid midpoint mark on the exterior here. And then make sure you're still not twisting it. Work your way around to the base and clip the bottom of the facing with the left hand mark at the base of the exterior. So now we have the zipper uh, just very basically clipped in place and you can see how it's going to look. So just work your way around starting at the top. We're going to work our way out towards the right hand side heading towards this curved edge and when we get close to that curved edge we're just going to stop and then we're going to move on to that midpoint and we're going to work upwards from that side midpoint until we get close to that curve. Now 
I'm actually going to leave this curve just for now and uh, turn the work around again and then we're going to start working out from the bottom edge again so just starting right at the bottom here I'm going to work out to this um, corner here and just put two or three clips along here until you get close to that curve and then move back around to that uh, center midpoint on the side here and work your way down from there getting close to the curve so what you're looking for is a nice equal uh, spread of everything um, around the edge of this you don't want anything um, slightly more tight or baggy um, than anything else so depending on how uh, tightly your curves are fitting you might need to do some clips into the seam allowance of the facing here uh, just to help that ease around the curve um, sometimes I'll do this when I'm actually at the sewing machine and sometimes um, I'll do it beforehand if I can see that it's really tight so just go ahead and clip those uh, curved edges together with the raw edges on the facing so now I'm just going to uh, move over to working on the other side so starting at the top section I'm going to work outwards towards those outer corners and just put two or three clips along the edge there and then move on to working upwards from the center midpoint just clipping close to those curves but not right around them just yet And move back around to the bottom edge and work your way up from this bottom edge. And then work your way down from the midpoint on the side down to the bottom corner. Now if you find you've got a bit more fabric on one corner uh, more than another uh, what you can actually do is just uh, wiggle everything along a little bit and uh, just move up that slack up the side until you've sort of evened out the amount that you've got in each section so that you don't end up with um, one part being really tight and another part being really loose. So now we've got probably the trickiest part of the project where we have to stitch the facing on and we won't be able to see the piping that we've got caught inside of here. So just feel that with your fingers because you can actually feel the actual ridge of that uh, through the facing here. And this is where you need to get your seam allowance really accurate so that you can get right up snug against the edge of that piping. So this is the only part of the project where you'll be sewing blind on the piping. For the remainder of the project when we put the flaps and the lining on we'll be able to turn it over and stitch on this side where we can follow the stitching line and that will help you get the piping nice and straight so now we can take this to the sewing machine now because this is quite a long and heavy project now you might find it easier just to fold uh, one side of it over while you work on uh, this side of the facing so I've still got my zipper foot on here and I'm just going to move my clip down out of the way and wiggle that all underneath the foot and I want to be feeling with my finger the edge of that piping uh, so that I can feel exactly where I want my stitching line to go and also following along the 3 8 inch seam allowance just making sure that um, I'm getting everything accurate so just use your stiletto here and stop and um, adjust every time you need to um, get everything lined up again so don't be afraid to just take it really slowly. Now the good thing about piping is that if you don't get it 100% right the first time you can actually go back in and unpick your stitches 
or you can move your stitching line in a little bit closer. Now as I come up to this corner I'm just going to be using my stiletto to push everything together and make sure that I'm not going to get any pleats and if you find that you need to snip into your seam allowance a little bit just to get around the corner to open everything out uh, then make sure you just do some little clips into the edge there. So I'm just feeling the edge of the piping as I go along with my fingers and making sure that um, I'm trying to get my stitching line as close as I can right up to the edge of that. So now I've got the facing sewn on one side, I'm just going to open out the seam here and have a really good inspect of my piping just to see what kind of result I've managed to get. So as you can see here on this side I've actually got um, not quite as snug as I would have liked and as I move along some parts are a little bit better than others. As I go around the corner it's pretty good but it could be a little bit tighter and it is pretty even but yeah this is just a case of how critical that you would like to be with your own work. Parts of this is not too bad but if you open it out really tightly. But what I want to show you here is that a result like this is actually really good because the next time we're going to be sewing this when we're sewing the um, in, inner pockets on we're actually going to be sewing from this side of the work and we'll be able to follow that stitching line and even sew just a little bit tighter inside that so that we can sandwich that piping in and get it even snugger. And that's going to mean that we get an even better fit. Now I am going to just do a little test on my zipper here just to check that I haven't got anything twisted here um, and just zip it up just enough so that I can check that everything's going to be running properly and I haven't got any of that facing twisted. So now you can go ahead and stitch the remaining facing onto your exterior cover. So now I've got this side of the facing stitched on and I'm just going to go and have a little look at how my repiping's turned out here. So there's a few bits there that I'd just like to go back and catch a little bit tighter uh, the next time that I stitch. So when I'm stitching around from the other side I'll make sure that I just catch that a little bit tighter. So now that we've got the facing attached we want to make sure that we still have the front cover on the right hand side and then just grab both of your inner cover flaps. We've got our left hand flap and our right hand flap. And we're going to put our left hand front onto the right side and our right hand front onto the left side. And this is really important to make sure you get everything around the right way. So the left hand front is going to go on the right side and the right hand front is going to go on the left side. So if you haven't already done this, go ahead and fold your flaps in half uh, long ways and mark your midpoints along the long side here also mark the midpoint for the left inner cover flap. So take your left inner cover flap and align the midpoint on the flap with the midpoint on the facing. So you've got a midpoint here and a midpoint here and you're going to clip them together. Now work your way outwards from the clip and align all these raw edges and just clip these edges together. Now as you get close to the uh, corner here you're just going to make sure that you're going to tuck everything in and out of the way so you might have to pleat that facing um, a little bit just tuck it all in and make sure that you're not going to get anything caught in there as you sew along the seam allowance. So just do a bit of tucking and folding underneath just so that you can feel that the front and the exterior of the flap here are um, nice and lined up together. And you can use as many clips as you need here to make sure that everything is uh, very safely um, clamped together. So 
So then you're just going to go back around to that midpoint and align those raw edges and work outwards from that edge there and just clamping everything together. Just making sure you tuck that facing down out of the way so that it won't get caught in that seam allowance. So now you can just check on the front uh, that you've actually got this inner cover flap uh, clipped on straight so you should see a nice straight line along the edge of this uh, on the front. So now you're just going to clip on that right inner cover flap just the same way as we did the first one. So just work your way outwards from the midpoint down to the bottom and then back from the midpoint up to the top. So now we're ready to sew this at the machine but I'm going to flip this over to the foam side and I'm going to be able to follow my stitching line um, from my piping stitching that I've already done. And this is just going to help me get all that piping nice and straight. So you want to stitch at least on top of that line and maybe even a fraction inside of it. So just have a little look underneath here just so you can see uh, where your inner cover flap is actually starting. And then just slide that under the machine and make sure that your needle is going to hit exactly on top of that line of stitching or just inside it if you need to make your piping a little bit snugger. So I'm just going to use my stiletto to help hold all these layers together and just sew as slow as I can and when I come to that corner I'm just going to make sure that I'm pushing that uh, facing out of the way so I'm not getting any of that bulk of that facing uh, catching in uh, that seam. And just go ahead and stitch the second inner cover flap on just the same way as you've done the first one. So now we've got both of these inner cover flaps sewn in on and I'm just going to inspect my work here just to check how that piping's going under there. So just pull everything out carefully and uh, just see uh, whether you're happy with uh, what you've got here. And I think that's a little bit of a uh, tighter result than I had the first time. So I'm pretty happy with that. So just turn everything out inside out again and make sure you've got your zipper tails uh, going up inside towards the exterior. So now you can grab your lining panel. So just flip that wrong sides up and then we're going to press under a quarter inch hem on each of the short sides. So just eyeball this and turn the hem up to the wrong side. And then I'm going to turn under a 3 8 inch hem to fully enclose those raw edges. So just press that in place. Then repeat that on the other side and then we can take that to the machine and stitch it in place. So now that that's sewn in place, I'm just going to fold those hems together and just mark the midpoint along this long edge of the lining. So just take your exterior and make sure that it is facing right side up with these um, inner flaps facing you and then take your lining and lay it right side down with the raw edge of the lining lining up with the top edge of the cover and match up those midpoints with the centre there and then push that facing down inside and just work your way out along the edge of um, those raw edges, lining them up uh, nice and neatly and stretching that lining out and just go back to the centre and work your way outwards down the other side. So just flip your work around and make sure that those, uh, the tail of the zipper there is going up inside the work and then line up the midpoint on the lining with the midpoint on the bottom of the exterior and then just work your way out along the lining clipping those together Now I'm going to turn the work over to the foam side and I'm going to stitch down the top and stitch along the bottom and catch that lining uh, nicely together with the exterior and make sure that I'm sewing right along that first stitching line that I've got there so that I can get my piping nice and snug.
So now your lining's sewn on. Uh, this is how your work should be looking. And you can just reach through now and pull that right through, right sides out. And now you can flip your work over and just reach through and pull that facing out and turn those inner covers around into the inside of the work. So you're just going to be checking that you haven't got any uh, little pleats or tucks or any of the piping that you've accidentally cut off. So just double check that you're happy with all your seams here. So just repeat that and turn the other side uh, right side out and just inspect everything. Just check that you're happy with how it's all looking. And if you've got any little bits that you need to touch up, uh, now's a really good time to just go back and uh, do some stitching, maybe some unpicking if you're not happy. So now I'm going to turn everything round inside out just for one last time so that we can trim these seams down and reduce the bulk inside. So now I'm just opening out these layers so that I can trim away some of the fabric and the foam layer uh, down by about half just so we can reduce some of the bulk that's going to be inside of this So now you're going to reach through for the very last time and turn everything round right sides out. So now you're up to the really satisfying part where you can just give everything a really good press and get rid of all the wrinkles and all the crinkles and push everything into place and make sure everything's uh, look, going to look its very very best because you won't need to be scrunching it up anymore. Now I like to fold that, that facing up and give that a press along there just to help hold everything in and that actually makes a really big difference from how much um, it all sort of splays out from the edges. So just fold that up and iron that along the edge there and that piping. So just work your way around uh, folding that facing forward and um, just giving it a really good press so that you can um, define the edge of your uh, facing and your piping. So I'm super happy with how this has turned out um, and I hope that you are really happy with your results as well. So the very very last step we need to do is just to uh, stitch the zipper tab up inside the cover. So just zip your zip up level with uh, the bottom of the exterior and just check that um, that's going to be nice and snug there. And then just grab a pin and pin that uh, tab uh, to the lining. Make sure it doesn't go all the way through to the front. And just hold that in place. And then I'm just going to grab my needle and thread and stitch around those three sides just through the tab and the lining. So I thought I'd just show you how my um, planner fits inside this cover. So this is the Erin Condren Life Planner. So I just open it up so that the back cover slides in and then just take the front cover and then just bend it around so that it just slips in uh, like so. And it fits in uh, really quite nicely, snugly enough but not too tight. And it closes really nicely. So let's zip it up and have a little look at how it all looks. So congratulations if you've made it this far sewing along with me. I'm really really happy with how this has turned out and I hope that you're happy with yours and I hope you enjoy using it.